a good looking crowd we have tonight. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know that there are all kinds of voices in the world, right? Man, there's a lot of voices out there. There are a lot of fear voices, aren't there? Uh, and some that have always been there and some that are ramping up again, right? And I said, I feel like, I feel like this is hugely important, hugely important. Say, I walk by faith and not by sight. So there's some things, if we're going to be a people of faith, and if we're going to be of those that truly walk by faith and not by sight, then there's some things that we need to know, and there are certain ways that people who walk by faith and not by sight walk and talk. Is that right? Amen. And so this is way down into my notes, Proverbs 18, 21. Brad, if you would um, throw that up. I'm not even sure. Is it Brad that's up there? Okay. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And um, I, I am telling you, it weirds me out. It weirds me out to be around, and I'm not pointing fingers, I'm not pointing fingers at anybody, but it weirds me out to be around people who have been around the Word of God as much as they have, who know and have heard this verse and the words that are coming out of their mouth. Because that tells me that truly we don't believe that death and life are in the power of our tongue. Because if we believed that, we would not be talking the way that we're talking. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And you know, it almost comes across like this, you guys. Like, oh, oops, I know, I know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have said that. But the problem is, it's in your heart. The problem is, because of where your gaze has been, those words are now in your heart. And out of the abundance of our heart, the mouth speaks. So of all the voices that are going on in the world, we have a choice as to what we give our gaze to, to what we give our attention to. And fear is going to come in and overtake us if we keep our gaze on the spirit of fear that's in the world. Amen. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So I just want to encourage you to think about where your gaze has been and what you're looking at. And what you're looking at. Because what, what I'm looking at and what I'm meditating on gets down into here. And then those words are coming out of our mouth. And it's not cute. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not, oh, God. I know that I shouldn't have said that. Words are carriers. Words are carriers. They're containers. And they're either going to produce in you and for you death or life. Death or life. Somebody say amen. amen. I know I'm sounding a little mama-ish right now. And I'll calm down here in just a second. Uh, but this is important. This is important. The second thing that I feel like we must be convinced of and be aware of is that, oh, this statement that God gave pastor some years ago, but Satan comes with questions, God comes with direction. Amen. So if you're being tormented with all kinds of questions, you're not fellowshipping with the one who knows. You're fellowshipping uh, with your enemy. So... The devil comes with questions and God comes with direction. This is good. This will help us. You guys, this will help us as we walk this life of faith. Amen. Murmuring and complaining is the fruit of unbelief. Murmuring and complaining is the fruit of unbelief. So check, check your heart. Check your heart. Have you... 
Uh, what have you been saying? What's been coming out of your mouth? Are we griping and are we complaining about the prices and, and what the cost of living is? Are we murmuring and complaining about the White House? Are we murmuring and complaining about what we see, what we don't have, what we should have, what's coming out of our mouth? And it will locate our hearts. It's going to locate our hearts. And I know this for a fact. If I'm griping, if I'm mumbling, if I'm complaining about anything, then there is unbelief in my life. And I'm, doing, I'm being irreverent and doing exactly what Pastor talked about. I'm telling God that he's not enough. Amen. Uh, another thing that we must be convinced of, and that is it is possible it is possible to limit the Almighty God. Psalm 78, 41. It is, it is possible to limit the Almighty God. The children of Israel did that in the wilderness. And, and that's on us. That's on us. I'm the only one that can limit God in my life. I'm telling you, you're the only one. You're the limiting factor in what God can do in your life. And we don't like this kind of preaching because we don't want anybody to feel bad. It's a feel-good gospel, and I don't have any responsibilities whatsoever. Yet until we talk the truth and preach the truth and say the responsibility's on me. The responsibility is on me as to whether I limit God in what he can do for me. Not, not my husband. Not my kids, not my boss, not what's going on in the world. Me. Say it's me. Okay. And two other things, and that is God demands faith of us. He demands faith. This isn't a, a sit back and just hope for the best and hope that, that he rescues it, us out of here before it gets really bad. God demands faith from us. He demands faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. We talked about last week that there's a God side and a man side to everything in life, to everything that we experience. There's a God side, which is the power side. There is a man side, which is faith, believing. Amen? And this last thing is God's word is greater than anything we see, hear, or feel. We need to be convinced of that God's word is greater than anything we see, hear, or feel. And I'm just telling you that spirit of faith uh, rises up. You can attest to that, to this. The spirit of faith rises up on the inside of you when your gaze is on his word. Is that right? Which is, which is how faith comes from. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So God's word is greater than anything that we face. And people of faith talk like it. People of faith talk like that. And, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, I've just, and I'm, listen, I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any stretch of the imagination. <clears throat> we won't stay there long. Anyway. But I'm growing and I'm learning and I am saying that faith is precious to me. That faith, faith is precious to me. So there have, there have been times, uh, yes, I, I am receiving correction uh, hand over fist right now. Correction from the Lord and I'm so thankful, I'm so thankful uh, for correction. But I'm telling you this, there, there has come a time to where I have walked away from conversations. Not that I don't love people, uh, love people very, very, very much. But I'm not going to sit around and listen to doubt and unbelief and grumbling and complaining and be a part of that. Why? Because it injures my heart. Because it injures my faith. We're people of faith. Is that right? A strong spirit of faith. A strong spirit of faith in this house. And the Bible says, we believe, therefore we speak. Is that right? 
We believe and therefore we speak. So just kind of a checkup on what are we believing. Because whatever we're believing, we're going to be speaking. Whatever we're believing, whatever is going on on the inside of us, we are going to be speaking. Amen. Amen. All right, are you in Ephesians? All right, we're going to start right there. Pastor, actually, we're going to start right here. Brad, hit it. This is cool. I think this just came out today. <clears throat> what, what people want is they say, come pray for me. When the right thing that should be said is teach me. Amen. Teach me. Tell me, show me in the word so that I myself could hold faith. Because the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If I don't have a word of God from some, for, uh, on something, then I have no faith. And if I have no faith, I have no victory. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5, 4 that this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. So it's so important that I wouldn't just pray for you. That's and right. that you wouldn't just, I mean, listen, we pray for people, don't get me wrong. But what would be better is that you would hold it for yourself and so that you could be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Amen. So that when you come into a situation and pastor's not there or mama's not there or grandma's not there and you come into a situation, you can believe God is in the situation. Amen. Right. Amen. Isn't that good? That was on TikTok. I'm not a TikToker, but the, I think it hit today. Is that right? Pretty, uh, pretty cool. That that is that is exactly the truth. the The greatest days of my life uh, was when I started being discipled. I guess the word the, the word would be when because I always knew that God was the answer. But I didn't know how to tap into that. I, ha I had no knowledge. I was always dependent on someone else's knowledge and someone else's faith. And, and God wants us to grow. He wants us, like, like Pastor said, He wants us to grow in the Word. Teach me the Word so that I can hold faith and I can tap into God for myself and I can impact others around me instead of always calling someone else to come do my praying for me. Amen. And so, aren't you thankful for the teaching of God's Word? Amen. Amen. So, Ephesians 1, 3, I want to read. Um, we're actually going to stay in Ephesians 1 for a bit. Woo! But Ephesians 1, 3 in the King James says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, look at that word. Who hath? Is hath? Uh, is that a going to or is that a past tense word? Okay, so blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Say in Christ. In Christ. Say I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. And that's where all, all the blessings are. In Christ. That's right. Thank you, Lord. The Norley translation of this verse uh, says, Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing that heaven itself enjoys. Glory to God. With everything that heaven itself enjoys. So, so the mentality, and I know I'm repeating myself. How many of y'all recognize that I'm repeating myself? I'm doing it on purpose. Thank you that you recognize that. Anybody else? You know, come on now. Right? I am. I'm doing it on purpose because faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing, not having heard. Faith comes by hearing. Amen. And, and so we see here in, in this verse that, that everything that we need for our life, everything that heaven itself enjoys, God has already delivered unto us in the person of Jesus Christ. And if he is our Lord and Savior, then we are not, we don't go out, uh, out here. We're not trying to get something from him out here. He's already given it, to, given it to us in Christ who indwells on the inside of us. 
Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, I want to read in Ephesians 1. We're going to continue here, and I'm going to start in verse 16. Paul praying here, inspired by the Holy Ghost. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. I am spitting everywhere. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Uh, I'm going to flip over here to, uh, to the Amplified. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints and so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, his mighty power, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, verse 21, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named above every title that can be conferred, not only in this age and in this world, but also in the age and the world which are to come. I'm going to stop right there just for a moment. But I want you to notice that in this passage, the Spirit of God did not move on Paul to pray for the people to be healed. He did not pray for a specific pr uh, provision. He did not pray for peace or restoration for them. He moved on Paul to pray for the Spirit of God to reveal to them what was already theirs in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who they were. The eyes of your uh, uh, heart being flooded with light so that you can know the hope to which you are called. So that you can know who you are in Christ Jesus. Uh, so you can know and understand the greatness of your inheritance. Do you know that we have an, an inheritance? Hallelujah. We have an inheritance. And, and the Holy Spirit praying through Paul is praying that he wants people's eyes and the eyes of their heart to be flooded with light so that you can know what is already yours. And so many times as Christian people, we are trying to get what already belongs to us. We need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to flood the eyes of our heart with light. So that we can see and so that we can know and so that we can understand. We're not going to know the greatness of his power. Read that in, in verse 20, um, uh, verse 20, 19. <laughs> In 19, so you can know and understand what is the immeasurable, unlimited, and surpassing greatness of his power that is in you. His power that is in you. We, we're not going to know this power that is in us apart from the Holy Spirit revealing it to us. And so instead of looking out here and looking to God for, for, for power to move on our behalf, we should be praying for the eyes of our understanding to be flooded with light so that we can know what is the power that is already on the inside of us. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's go down to verse to chapter 2. And in verse 5 in the Amplified it says, Even when we were dead by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive together. In fellowship and in union with Christ, he gave us the very life of Christ himself. Hallelujah. The same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace that we are saved. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I want to read a quote here from the book, The Healer Divine. And I'll make mention of the books uh, again for those of you who aren't here the, the first night. But this is a quote from the book, and it said, The truth is, you don't need to pray to be healed if you know that healing belongs to you. All you really need to do to receive healing is to state what you believe in your heart. 
say amen. Amen. We don't really need to pray uh, to be healed. If we know that healing belongs to us, all we really need to do to receive healing. And this is true of anything. This is true of anything that God has provided for us in Christ Jesus. Amen. That we just state and we confess. He's the high priest of our confession. Is that right? We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. Amen. Of what we believe in our heart. One minister stated, since I learned all that belongs to me in Christ, is this a, is this a worthy thing to know and to find out? What belongs to you in Christ Jesus? <clears throat> Is that worthy of your time and of your effort? Since I learned all that belongs to me in Christ, when I need something, I just take it. I spend my time praying for those who don't know what belongs to them. Amen. Amen. But we're so busy so many times because we don't know. Because we don't know what belongs to us. We spend so much of our spiritual energy, again, trying to get what is already ours. And so, in, in, through, through, the teaching, through the teaching of the word, uh, he shows us and equips us and he helps us. He reveals to us and he teaches us how to tap into that power. We need the power to work for us, don't we? I need a Kleenex. I'm so sorry. Um, we we want. Uh, thank you, Pastor. The um, yeah. <laughs> we need to know. So so it's it's good to believe, but we need to know how to hook into that power to work for us. Amen. Amen. Okay. Are y'all still with me? All right, so a little review here. God's will to heal. We know this. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And I am going to say this possibly every single week because uh, not everyone grew up with the teaching that it's God's will to heal. Many people grew up believing that it is not God's will to heal or that healing passed away with the apostles or, or something else. So, so in order for our faith to work, we have to know what the will of God is. We have to be convinced of it. And that's our first move. I'm just going to tell you, don't even try to appropriate and receive healing if you're not convinced that healing is for you because you're going to frustrate your faith. So, so our first act is to be in his word until we're absolutely convinced that it's God's will to heal me. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Luke 5, 12 through 13 says, and this is the leper that came to Jesus, said it, it came to pass when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. Say full. So this tells me right here, it doesn't matter how advanced any disease is. Who seeing Jesus fell on his face and besought him saying, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. So, so many times we know this, that many people, we are convinced that God can, that God is all powerful, but not as convinced that he's willing. Right? But if we'll stay with the word... If we'll stay with the word, then we will become fully persuaded. But we're not going to get fully persuaded any other way than getting God's word on it. No other way. Say, there's no other way. <clears throat> and he put forth his hand and he touched him saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy departed from him. Jesus settled once and for all the great question, if it be your will for all mankind right here in this story. How many of you realize these aren't just stories, these are places in the Bible where we get answers for ourselves. Where, where we get answers for ourselves. Amen. And so I, I, I need to insert right here, again, something that we talked about uh, last week. When we are settling that it is God's will to heal, um, that we have to... Remember what I talked about, uh, Brother Keith, last week, and what him telling us not to meditate on and talk about 
things that we don't know and things that we don't understand because the more that we talk about that, the deeper in darkness we go and the farther away from the answer we go. But we go to the Word. <clears throat> we go to the Word and we nail down what we do know. And we stay with what we do know. We stay with what we do know. So in receiving healing, I'm telling you, you will be, I will be, we will be bombarded with questions like, well, I know so-and-so, and I know they were good people. I know that she loved the Lord, and I know that they were in faith, and she did not receive her healing. Is that a question? And does that drive us farther away from our answer? We can't, we can't partake. I can't partake. If I'm going to believe God's word on it being his will to heal me, my eyes have got to be set on that word, and I cannot allow myself to entertain any other thought about anybody else's experiences or my past experiences. It will take me completely out of the realm of faith. So we have to be disciplined. It, it's not going to fall on us like ripe cherries from a tree. It's not going to fall of us, on us. We have to be disciplined with what we're looking at and what we're talking about and what we're thinking on. But, but I'm telling you, there is, it's, not that, it's not that you're out of God's will. If, the, if these thoughts uh, come to you, just cast them down. Cast it down and say, no, I'm not taking that thought. I'm going back to the word of what God said and my eyes are staying right here and I'm answering it with what God said and God said by the stripes that wounded Jesus I was healed. That's the word I'm holding on to. And this and in doing that I'm telling in doing this listen it's not passing an indictment on any other person. Do y'all understand that? It's not making a judgment on any other person. It's keeping ourselves in the place of faith so that faith isn't interrupted so the healing flow can continue in our lives. Amen. Turn to Proverbs 4, 20. <clears throat> <clears throat> so we know that God's word is medicine. It says, My son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and healing or medicine and health to all of their flesh. Say, God's word is medicine for my flesh. Amen. It says it's medicine. I don't think we're going to get there tonight, but we are going to look at a couple of, of examples uh, of healings in the Gospels that, uh, that Jesus did. But God's, God's word is medicine for our flesh. Do you know that medicine isn't... Um, um, medicine causes us to... To heal and to recover. Is that right? Yep. It, it helps to resolve physical things that are going on. I'm talking about natural medicine. Uh, to resolve things that are going on in our body. It, it doesn't say that take one pill and you're instantly healed. It says my words are medicine to your flesh. Medicine to your flesh. That means the more I'm taking the medicine of God's word, the more I am recovering and divine healing is flowing in my life. Uh, a minister said, do not, do not substitute uh, the belief in divine healing for the actual taking of God's word. Don't substitute your belief in divine healing for the actual taking of the medicine of the word. How do we take the medicine? How do we take it? We say it. 
We say it. We're taking. We're, the, our, our confession of faith, uh, our healing confessions, uh, he himself took our infirmities. He, he bore away my sickness and my disease. By the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. With long life, he satisfies me and he shows me his salvation. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Who, who forgives all of my iniquities, who heals all of my diseases. What am I doing? I'm taking the medicine. I'm taking the medicine. I'm taking the medicine. And that medicine is working a healing in my flesh. Amen. <clears throat> So, I, I, I want to read. I want to read this. I'm I'm not going to teach per se, but uh, I do want to mention it because this is something that's hung me up in in times past, um, in times recent past even. Um, but there are God wants us. He wants us healed. He wants us walking in what He's provided for us. Amen. He does. And there are, there are uh, methods or ways to receive healing, if I can put it like that. Bottom line is, it comes from releasing our faith. It, call, it, it comes from the releasing of our faith. Let, let me share this. Brother Hagen, how many of y'all have ever heard of Brother Hagen's healing testimony? I'm going to play a bit of it uh, here at, at, at some point, not tonight. Um, but he was on his deathbed as a 16-year-old boy. He was bedfast for 16 months. And uh, he actually died, went to hell three times. He wasn't born again. The Lord brought him back. Uh, he became born again on his deathbed. And uh, he, was, he was on his deathbed because he had a deformed heart, an incurable blood disease. There were times that he dealt with paralysis, and there was times that he dealt with blindness. Well, he was taught, he went to church as a kid. His, his mom and his grandma apparently went to church, but the church that they went to did not believe that God could heal you, uh, believed that healing ha had passed away. And, and so there he was as a 16-year-old boy on his deathbed, and this is what he had been taught, and this is what he had known. Uh, and, and so... Anyway, he said that there was something on the inside of him after he was born again. Not, not an audible voice, not a strong authoritative voice, but the voice of his own spirit that he, that he heard and that he just sensed. And it was the word that you don't have to die. You do not have to die. And, and so the problem was he couldn't find anyone to agree with him. Uh, in fact, uh, the next thing that he heard uh, from, this, from this voice on the inside of him was, it's in the book. It's in the book, meaning it's in the Bible. That this is where you're going to find your answer. It's in the book. It's in the Bible. Now, again, this is a 16-year-old boy who had no support whatsoever. He wasn't sitting in, in beyond church getting fed the Word of God. All right? Uh, and in fact, he was surrounded by doubt and unbelief. But he, uh, he told his mama, he said, bring me my Bible. Bring me my Bible. And so there were times during, during his uh, times that he was in bed that he was even too weak to even hold the Bible, that she would prop it up for him. But he came to, uh, he came to the scripture in James uh, that said, if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And he just began to sob. He, act, he just began to sob because there was no one around. The preacher that came when he asked for a pastor or a preacher to come to the house held his hand and said, it'll be over soon, son. It'll be over soon. So that was the help that he got from, from uh, the pastor or the preacher, that it's just, it's just going to be over soon. So there was no one to pray the prayer of faith over him. So he began to sob. He says, there's no way for me to be healed. There's no way for me to be healed. Have you all ever heard uh, statements like that from the enemy? You know, come on now, we all have. 
well, these conditions can't be met, so there's no way for me to be healed. God is so good that he gives us several different ways to bring us to a place of releasing our faith. And, and I, I will tell you this, and this is what Brother Hagen says too, and this is, this is why I pound it so much. And um, one of the ways is just absolutely knowing that healing belongs to you by the teaching, of your word, the teaching of God's word, the believing of God's word, the taking of God's word for ourselves. Because if I learn how to take by faith God's word, then uh, sickness, disease, sin, and all that Satan offers no longer gets to call the shots and dominate me. Amen. My own faith will lay hold of what's already given. Amen. Amen. And it is, Brother Hagin said, the best method to receive healing. Um, all right, so I'm just going gonna, gonna to mention a couple of these very, uh, very, very quickly. But uh, using the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. That's in this book here. Using the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Is that right? We hold the name of Jesus. Our champion, the conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. We hold the name of Jesus over every sickness and disease. And it must bow its knee. Amen. Um, we can, we can pray, um, we can pray for healing to the Father in the name of Jesus. John 16, 23 and 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Is healing a thing? Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name, ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Uh, the prayer of agreement, you know, have you ever said uh, th th to pray together? The prayer of agreement with one another. And uh, we have, we've pretty much uh, shot ourselves in the foot with this one because uh, most usually there's not a lick of faith involved. So for the prayer of agreement to work, if, if uh, Pastor and I come into uh, the prayer of agreement, that means he's got to be fully convinced in releasing faith, and I've got to be fully convinced in releasing faith. Amen. And so will you just agree with me? Will you agree with me that this? Will you agree with me? Well, you tell me uh, what you're standing on. What word is it that you're releasing your faith on? And if I know what word you're releasing your faith on, then I can come into agreement with that if it's in the word. Amen. And again, uh, call for the elders of the church and anointing them with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Uh, again, I'm going to say it's not the oil. The oil isn't a magic button. All right? It's the prayer of faith. But it is coming into obedience. The Lord said this, call for the elders in the church. So when that, when that verse stands out to me and it says, call for the elders uh, of the church, uh, having them anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith will save the sick, then my faith is in that right there, in that word. All right? And, and so even when there's prayer lines, how many of you have been in service where there's prayer lines? All right. And, and so even uh, prayer lines, healing lines, you know, coming, coming up uh, wanting to receive healing. But so many times what happens is we're just coming on a wing and a prayer. And, and there, there has to be faith coming, released from the one who's coming to receive, not just from the one who is praying for and so that's why even in healing school, when uh, at, at Rhema, um, or when Brother Hagen would do, uh, he would do uh, meetings, and, and, and used to, they would do meetings for long periods of time, for weeks. But, but even, even a week, he would say, okay, he would encourage people who were coming, coming to receive healing. Don't come the first night. Sit under the teaching of the word so that faith can come to you. So that when you come up for prayer and the minister releases his faith, that there is faith in you to now be released and to receive. Amen. Amen. And then receive healing through the laying on of hands. How many of y'all know that Mark 6.18 says that the believer will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover? Did y'all know that? Okay. 
Amen. And then uh, let me mention this, receiving healing through a gift of the Spirit. And so of the nine gifts of the Spirit, there are uh, gifts of healings. There is the gift of faith. There is the gift of miracles. And these gifts of the Spirit are just that. Uh, It's as the Spirit wills. We have no control over that whatsoever, except that I will say, it's as the Spirit wills, but faith is involved. Faith is involved because he has to find a man to yield to him uh, for the gift of the Spirit to flow through. But the recipient, it doesn't have anything to do with their faith. It is a gift of the Spirit. Amen. And usually, usually those flow. And again, it's not, you can't, you, you can't make that happen. It is as the Spirit, it is as the Spirit uh, wills. Amen. And usually those flow uh, for unbelievers, unbelievers, or very, very young, untaught believers. Because after we've been a believer for a while, God wants us using our faith. God wants us using our faith. Amen. So that's why it never, we're never going to expire on this. (laughs) Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. And I said this and we didn't even get into the, we'll get into it next time. The healing of the nobleman's son and the ten lepers that I really, really do want to talk about. Uh, but this is, this is one of the reasons uh, in talking about Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, when, it, when he instructs us. How many of you do you realize that when God tells us something, he doesn't suggest? They're commands. They are commands. And so when he tells us to attend to his words, keep them in the center of our heart, for they are life to those who find them and health and medicine to their flesh. And uh, I've said this before. If I believe that verse, then I'm going to be taking the medicine. I'm going to be taking the medicine and I am going to believing that the healing power, miracles aren't just instantaneous. That was a little weak. Healing, and and, and we would have gotten into that when we, we will get into that when we look at the nobleman's son. But the first healing, the first healing miracle that Jesus did was not instantaneously. And we as God's people have uh, given up and laid down our faith and our confidence because we don't see something instantly. But in the healing of the nobleman's son, uh, he asked the people there when he, was, he had to travel back, I think a day and a half to get back to where his son was. And he said, at what hour did uh, he begin to amend? At what hour did he begin to get better? Amen. Amen. So we can't be duped in believing that the healing power of God is not working in our body when we don't receive like this. His words are medicine to my flesh. And so when I'm taking his word, when I'm taking his word, when I'm taking that medicine, then my posture is, thank you, Lord. Oh, Father, I thank you that that your word is working mightily in me. I thank you that your word is working mightily in my body. Your healing word, it's no less of a miracle because it's not instantaneous is what I'm trying to get over. We've laid our faith down because we think divine healing has to be instantaneous or that divine healing isn't working in us at all. Uh, And then back to my point of Proverbs 4.20. um, If I believe that his words are life to me, if I believe that, uh, and if I believe that his words are are healing and medicine to my flesh, then I'm going to be getting myself to where his words are. My highest priority in life is getting God's word on everything. Getting his word. I'm going to get myself to where his word is being taught. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. 
we walk by faith and not by sight. If, uh, how many of you, uh, be bold about this, but uh, raise your hand if you are standing on God's word, if you're believing for, for healing in your body right now. Actively believing God for a healing, for something to be made right in your body. Then I want to, I just want to encourage you, like I said, way off my notes here, but I know I need to, to wrap it up. Be confident of this. Stay with the word and, and, and rejoice and give him thanks that that medicine, the medicine of his word is working mightily in you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the medicine of your healing word is working mightily in me. It's making right what isn't right. Thank you, Lord. And don't let the devil keep tormenting you about I'm doing something wrong. Don't let this thing of time... Man, this thing of time has tripped me up before. Don't let this thing of time rob you of the truth of what God says. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that your word is working mightily in me. I thank you that it is, uh, it's curing, it's making right the things in my body that is not right. And if I'll give my attention to thanking him and praising him uh, and get my gaze fixed on that instead of what's going on in my body, uh, the manifestation comes a lot more uh, quick. Amen. Is that right, Miss Janice? Word working mightily in your body? Amen. 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 Pastor, do you want to... No. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Didn't get through the notes. How many is surprised? But did you receive anything tonight? Amen. Stand, stand with me and and we're going to pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I want to lead you in a confession. Remember, he's the high priest. He is the high priest of our confession. And we receive anything from God the very same way that we received our eternal salvation. That we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. For with the heart man believes, but with the mouth confession is made unto. It's not enough. It's not enough to believe. It's not enough to only believe. Faith has to be in two places. It has to be in our heart and it has to be in our mouth. Amen. Amen. So we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. And through that confession, salvation is made unto, uh, our confession. Uh, is made unto salvation. It's the bridge to salvation. It's what takes us to that salvation. The believing in our heart and the confessing of our mouth. And I'll tell you, I'm telling you this right now, that if you'll begin and stay on and keep the healing word of God in your mouth, there will be ministering spirits and ministering angels that will come to aid in your healing. And, and, and if that means that a body part needs to be replaced, then they'll bring a new body part. But that, that's only going to happen if we keep our gaze fixed on Him. It's only going to happen if we keep our, our gaze and our attention fixed on what His Word says and keep our mouth going in the direction of what the Word says. We cannot be talking about stinking COVID and the new strands that are coming out and expect to walk in divine healing. I'm sorry that I yelled. It's true. It's true. We don't patty cake with the devil. And that's what we're doing when we're talking about what he's doing instead of what God has done. That's what we're doing. So say after me, Father, I call you my healer. You are the God who healeth me. I thank you that you took my sickness, my disease and weaknesses, and you carried them away. Since you've already paid for it, with faith in you and in your word, I receive it now. 
I take it now. It's mine now. I'm not trying to get it. It's mine now. For God has already given it. No matter what I see, no matter what I feel, I will occupy myself with your word. Keeping it before me, in my heart, and in my mouth. And as I keep the switch of faith turned on, I believe the healing power of your word is doing a work, working mightily in me, and will be fully completed and manifested in my body. And manifested in my body. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father, we, we worship you tonight. We lift our hands to you. You are, we say, uh, out of our heart and with our mouth, you are Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth us. Father, I thank you that there is no condition that is too far gone, that the miracle working power of your word and your healing power cannot reach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for bodies being made right in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for a strong spirit of faith in, in, in this house and in these people. A strong spirit of faith. Glory to God that we, that we turn our gaze and our attention upon you, our healer. And we will not even give a thought uh, to what we feel or, or to any, any other report that comes to us. We say that the truth of your word trumps anything in this natural realm. Glory to God. Father, I thank you for staying power. I thank you for staying power right now. I pray strength on the inside of every single person and declare that he who began a good work in you is faithful to bring it to its full completion in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, I thank you that, that, that you are putting on the inside of us uh, the heart of a finisher. Uh, the, the heart of a finisher and, and the strength to finish. And we will say we will not quit. We will not quit and we will not be talked out. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Glory to God. Glory to God. We honor you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Hey, as uh, we're dismissed tonight, I just wanted to uh, make you aware of something. Uh, Brother Hagen has a, uh, a set of, I guess it's a video or it's an audio, with just of healing scriptures. It is. It's on our and, website even. Uh, yeah, it's on it. And so I was going to make mention of that. You know, she was talking about the number one thing, the place you start, is you got to believe. you got to believe that it really is God's will to heal me. And there's so much, uh, so much experience in our lives that that was that we've seen and rooted in, in unbelief. That yes. if it's God's will, um, and again, faith begins where the will of God is known. So this, it's on our website. Um, we really should get it on our app resources. We'll it, do. It is. is. It? It's yeah, on our it app. Okay, it's on the under app resources. too. Under resources. Under resources. And you can just put that on and listen to the word of God and let it heal, let it heal you. I remember Brother Hagen. He said this, and you can listen to it at night. I mean. Uh, put it on. Your, your spirit man's still awake. Uh, the Lord will talk to you in the middle of the night. But um, I remember he was, he'd was talk about this it, it went in healing lines. They'd teach on healing for, you know, like she said, a week or two weeks during the yeah. day they'd teach. And then they'd have healing at night. But they'd teach. And he'd say, come. And, and he was laying hands on people. And ten, eight out of ten were getting healed. And as he began to focus on what wasn't happening... Um, and he began to see, well, this didn't happen, and this didn't happen, and this didn't happen. It went from where only two weren't to it was the exact opposite, only two out of ten, and eight weren't getting healed. And he, and he asked the Lord, why is, why is it? And he said, your focus, your focus is on all that is not it's and all not. that I'm not. And all that, instead of all that I am, if you'll get that switch, you'll get, you'll, you'll step back into what, what. And so anyway, there's just so many things you and I don't know. Yeah. The reality, 
you and I can say that we, we know this, we know that, we know no. There's a lot of things we don't know, but we do what we do know and what we have to choose is to submit our will. This is faith. Faith is the submission of my will to God's word above what I see, think, hear, feel, Amen. or have experienced. Amen. So anyway, God bless you and 